Mark. William Stone, take one. Mr. Stone, I'd like to talk a little bit about, about what you went through towards the end of the decade, but, but just to give a sense of it, what, your family was in Arkansas and you had land and raised things and you had enough to leave, live on, sort of, more or less. What, what was it that made you, you and your family decide to leave? Well, it just got hard to make a living you know, because we had to uh, more or less sell all the animals and our property eventually, and uh, it was just hard to make a living. What was the price people were getting for, you were telling me? Well, well for, for, for uh, corn, wheat. Well, something. you get 10 cents a bushel for oats, and 10 for corn, 15 for wheat. That was probably less than what it cost to raise it, right? Yes, it was. Uh, if you could find a job, you know, you get 10 cents an hour. Had you, um, had, had you or your parents heard that things were better out west? Yes, we, um, my dad's brother lived and uh, he was out here during that time and was he following a fruit harvest and he was getting by pretty good. I've heard some stories, I don't know if you ever saw that, that at a certain period out in Oklahoma and Arkansas that planes would come around and drop leaflets saying, come on out to California, there's good jobs and good money. Did you ever hear no, that? I never saw any of that, no. So anyway, you hit the road uh, right after your 18th birthday. Well, it, yes, the day before, one day before my birthday, we, we uh, hit the road. To, and, and how old were you then? 18, turn, that was my 18th birthday. What, what did, uh, what did, I know you're, your uncle had said things, but what did you figure California would be like when you came out here? Well, I really didn't have uh, too much, think too much about it, but kind of was kind of like it uh, that I thought it was. Were you disappointed when you got here? No, I wasn't. I, no, I was. I was happy. You didn't seem like you should have maybe turned around and gone home. No, right? no. <laughs> so tell me about that year you spent when you came out here working the fruit. What was that like? Well, that was, that was a good experience, you know. We started, uh, I started picking oranges down at Riverside, and then up Porterville and Lindsay area. Then ended up at uh, Brentwood picking peaches and apricots. And um, at some point, something happened, and, and some of your relatives, I hear the story, went up to the Bay Area and heard there was work. Tell me how that Oh, how that yeah, happened. we were. I was hauling oranges down at, uh, from Lindsay to Portersville, and uh, one of my cousins came with one of his friends, hauled a load of grain from Hanford to uh, San Francisco, put on the docks over there, and he came back and said, we're going to, we're leaving. I said, where are you going? Well, we're going to Richmond, California. I said, we're going to work for a dollar and a quarter an hour. I said, well, what are you going to do? They're moving the mountain, filling the bay, building the shipyard. Are you crazy? <laughs> so when I got my paycheck, it was 10 cents an hour less than, than uh, the supposed to be getting. So we were gone too. <laughs> and that's sure enough, we came up there and, and uh, they just like they said, just hiring everybody to come along. Yeah. You, uh, do you remember what it felt like getting that first paycheck? Oh, I felt great. Gosh, it's more money than I ever made in my life. I think it was dollar, dollar dime an hour for labor. The carpenter's helper. What'd you do, go out and spend it? Well, gosh, I can't remember. I didn't, <laughs> I, I didn't, uh, didn't spend too much of it. But anyway, it was a real different feeling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, how much money have you had in your pocket before that? Well, not not a whole lot, you know. Um, like in the fruit harvest, you know, you make five dollars a day. That was you was happy, and up here, then you get a little over a dollar an hour. You're real happy. Huh? Now, um, there was a lot of people coming into town, wasn't there? I mean, that was a big crowded town at that. Point. Oh yes, it was. Where were they all from? All over, it, it, mostly from the Midwest, you know. And everybody was working, and did it seem like people were getting along pretty well? This was folks that never. I never, them. never heard any trouble between them. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you were part of that crew that that actually helped build the shipyards, right? Yes. Yeah. Did you stay on once the yards were built, or what? Well, 
we was building the yards, and then the, right in where they started the welding school. I went to welding school, and uh, then in about 30 days, I went out in the yard out there and started tacking. And then after about 30 days of that, they put me in double bottoms, and that's where I got drafted. I, I heard that story that people just moved up real fast. I mean, one day you'd be starting out, another day you'd be running a crew there. Well, well, yes, yeah, some, some of the people, yeah. yeah. How, how did it feel, um, that idea of building these ships? Did that feel like it was an important thing to be doing with the war on? Yes, it, it, uh, everybody kind of thought that. And they, they all had the feeling that... Uh, that, um, or what, what were they called, the home front or something, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So did your uh, folks did your folks go to work too? Did the rest of your family go to work in Richmond? Well, yeah, my folks came up here eventually, and they worked worked. Uh, my dad worked in the shipyards, and then then he um, after the shipyards he uh, worked machinist. I forget what company he worked for in Oakland. So he worked there the rest of his life. Let's cut for just a second. How, how much do we have on the side? And we're going, Mark. That was a take two. Second slide. Um, tell me a little bit more. During that year, you were you were what people call a fruit tramp. They're following the harvest. What? Uh, how would you live? Where would you sleep? How would you eat? Well, um, at that time, uh, I'd bought a car, and and we'd haul our little pots and pans and you know, cooking utensils around with us. And but when we lived in Brentwood, worked. Uh, Peaches and apricots over there. Mark. <coughs> okay, you were gonna tell me a little bit about what it was like living that year you were harvesting, where you, how you how you lived and ate and stuff. Yeah, but well, there in Brentwood, you know, at the, I think it B and G camp. I think it Procter and Gamble camp. They had a regular camp there for the workers. Mm -hmm. They had the uh, floors and, and about four foot size, and then they had a frame, and they'd put a tent over top of them. And they had a community kitchen. And had stoves and everything up there, so you'd carry your food over there to the kitchen, cook it, and come back and eat it. Would you still see, in, in that period, would you still see folks camping by the side of the road in Hoovervilles, as they used to call them? Never, I never saw a lot of that, you know, but uh, they they were up in this area, they were during the shipyards, all over this area. Uh, Why was that? Well, the, the, there's no place for them to live. You come up here and uh, and they just live wherever they could. Like, I lived in the car when I first came here. Just, just right over here in San Pablo. And that was when they were building all that housing. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, tell me a little bit more about about the, that short period of time you spent when you actually worked in the shipyards, about the different kinds of people you'd meet and where they'd be from and that sort of stuff. Well, that, they was Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, and Texas people. Well, there's people from every state just about it. Was, uh, but uh, they're all, all like, like the your cousins or something, you know. <laughs> they were all friends, seemed to be. I know that. that's the way it seemed to me. Why do you think why do you think people were so got along so well? Do you have any ideas? I don't unless it was the uh war time and everybody doing the same thing. Yeah. Same sense that they were yeah. And, and of course they were all making money too. Yeah, they were. So that made yeah. a difference. I heard that, that people were so happy they would uh, they were working that they'd wear their shipyard pins downtown. They'd never take oh, them yeah. off. Oh, yeah, yeah, never take them off. Just, <laughs> uh, they wear their hard hats into the yeah. Yeah. So, uh, um, but then you went off to the war. Yeah, right but you know, Richmond was alive 24 hours a day. Downtown Richmond, the old Richmond down there, 24 hours a day. Everything was cooking down there all day long, all around the clock. It's hard to imagine looking at it today. Oh, yeah. Just it, full of folks, right? And yeah. Money and... Was that good times for Richmond? 
I think it was, yes. Everything was, uh, all the businesses was uh, doing just top business. That well, it was such a change, right? Yeah. From what they've gone through before. Okay, let's cut. Park. Take four. Okay, tell me that story you were starting to tell about what your cousin told you. Well, when, oh. no, I'm sorry. when he uh, came up here to uh, San Francisco with his friends, he hadn't been working, you know, and he didn't, he didn't have hardly, couldn't have had much money. But when they said they were going to come back up here, I said, well, what are you going to use for money to live on until you get a paycheck and to join the union and all that? Well, he said, they, uh, the union will uh, take the money out of your first check, part of the money, and, for, uh, and then he said there's a, Restaurant there on McDonald, around six to McDonald. It's it's named the uh, its name is Go Run Cafe, and they give you meal tickets. So that's that's what we all did. We we ate in that restaurant down there for on meal tickets. That got you to your first check, right? Yeah, and then we kept eating there for quite a while. Was it okay food? Oh yeah, yeah. So did did you actually have to join the union before you left for the war? We we joined the unions when we start to you know as soon as we start to work they took the um, then they they took it out of our checks until it, it was paid for. Do you remember when you when you went to work at first they gave you a choice did they give you a choice where do you want to work or what do you want to do or any of that stuff? Or? Well, I think uh, I think they more or less told told me uh, you know that's where they need to that's where they're hiring right now. They need carpenters, helpers, laborers. That was final few, right? Oh yeah, yeah, you're great. <laughs> okay, that's that's all I wanted. We just have a wild line that you worked at the ship round, right? Yes. Yeah, we just that so that we can. I'm sorry. What line do you think would work? Just we just need shipyard. Shipyard. Yeah, when I worked at the shipyard or something. So that that was shipyard three that we were building. Mm -hmm. Yeah.